Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. It's February 27th, 2021. Now it's, an, it's a Saturday evening program here at Eastern Time. We're studying from Bhagavad Gita as it is chapter 10, entitled The Opulence of the Absolute, text 41. Um, uh, I, I don't have it on the screen, but I did write the verse. Okay. Uh, yat yat. Yeah, yeah. Vibhuti mat. Vibhuti mat. Satvam. Satvam. Srimad. Srimad. Orjitam. Orjitam. Eva. Eva. Va. Va. Tat tat. Eva vagacha. Eva vagacha. Tvam. Mama. Mama. Tejom sha. Sambhavam Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Shri Mad Orji Tam Evava Tatad Eva Vagacha Tvam Mama Tejom Sha Sambhavam Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Srimad Orjitam Eva Vam Tatad Eva Vagachatvam Mamba Tejong Shasambhavam Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Srimad Urjitam Eva Vam Tatad Eva Vagachatvam Mama Tejong Shasambhavam Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Shri Mat Urji Tam Eva Vah Tatad Eva Vagachatvam Mama Tejong Shasambhavam Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Shri Mad Urji Tam Eva Vah Tatad Eva Vagachatvam Mama Tejo Shasambhavam Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Shri Mad Ujitam Eva Vam Shri Mad Ujitam Eva Vam Tat Tad Eva Vagat Satvam Tat Eva Vagat Satvam Mama Tejom Shasambhavam. Mama Tejom Shasambhavam. Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam. Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam. Shri Madhujita Mevavam. Shri Madhujita Mevavam. Tata Deva Vagachatam. Yad-yad-vibhuti-mat-satvam Yad-yad-vibhuti-mat-satvam 
Srimad Urjita Mevava Srimad Urjita Mevava Tata Deva Vagachatvam Tata Deva Vagachatvam Mama Tejom Shasambhavam Mama Tejom Shasambhavam Okay, we'll go now to the word for word. Yat yat. Yat yat. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Vibhuti. Vibhuti. Opulences. Opulences. Mat. Mat. Having. Having. Sattvam. Sattvam. Existence. Existence. Shrimat. Shrimat. Beautiful. Beautiful. Orjitam. Orjitam. Glorious. Glorious. Eva. Eva. Certainly. Certainly. Va. Va. Or. Or. Tat tat. Tat tat. All those. All Eva. Eva. Certainly. Certainly. Avagacha. Avagacha. You must know. You must know. Tvam. Tvam. You. You. Mama. 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 My. Mama. Teja. 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 Splendor. 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 Amsha. 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 Partly. Partly. Sambhavam. Sambhavam. Born of. Born of. Translation. Know that all beautiful, glorious, and mighty creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada. Any glorious or beautiful existence should be understood to be but a fragmental manifestation of Krishna's opulence, whether it be in the spiritual or material world. Anything extraordinarily opulent should be considered to represent Krishna's opulence. Om Gyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guavena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhu Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Upakadamayam Tirati Svapadantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavam Chang Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragnatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Cha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopi Sad Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrinda Vineshvare Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Kriye Vanchakalpata Yubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyeva Cha Patitanan Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Gorabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Sri Madhurji Tame Bhavata Tadeva Bhagachatram Mamatim Shu Tejom Sasambhavam Know that all mighty, beautiful, and glorious creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. Okay, so this is this verse uh, in my mind. It's it's continuing the theme from uh, yesterday. Yes, yesterday's evening program. Our theme was uh, processes for realizing God in nature. Realizing God in nature. We we read a verse. Punyagan Punyaganda Pritivyam Cha Krishna says, "I am the fragrance of the earth," and in the <coughs> Where poor Talbot speaks about each flower has a fragrance, which ultimately comes from the earth. In seventh chapter, there's a verse. Krishna says, Raso hamapsukonteya prabhasmi sasti suryayo pranavasa radedeshu shabdike purusham reshu. He says, I am the taste of water, I'm the light of the sun and the moon, I'm the sound and ether, I'm the, I'm the syllable 
own um, um, ability in, in humans. Here in this 10th chapter, there's really a series of about more than 20 verses. And so it's, it's about realizing the, the absolute, realizing the supreme in the, in the wind, in the, in the fire, in the, in, in, in the rain, in, in the elements. Okay. And so this is a common theme uh, in Bhagavad Gita, several, several places in Bhagavad Gita, and even more so in Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, okay, and so, uh, and, and so the, the, idea, the idea is to live our life more and more so that we cultivate the art and the science, the capacity to realize God everywhere. And as we mentioned yesterday, yesterday evening, yeah, of course, God is everywhere. Um, that doesn't mean that anything I do or anything I think or anything I say brings me closer to self and to God. So that's bhakti yoga and that's spiritual life. So of course, uh, Sarvasya Chaham, Ridi Sanivi Sto Krishna says he's the super soul in the heart of all living entities. All right, so God is everywhere in your heart, in every atom, in the blade of grass, in the squirrel. Okay. How much are we realizing that? And so for this process of bhakti yoga, it's a, it's a process. It's a process that by following, then each day as we progress, each day as we progress, then, then more and more we realize the connection of everything with Krishna, the connection of everything with, with God. And so this is important in self-realization, in God realization, it's important. Just like, okay, like, let's say if we, there, there's a nice painting and we used this analogy last night. Okay, so then it's, it's nice, it's, it's natural uh, to appreciate. Maybe it's a painting of a landscape. It's a, a painting of a landscape or flowers. Okay, so we appreciate ah, the artistic beauty. Okay, but then, um, uh, and then we can go deeper than that. Well, I, I, I know it's, What's the personality? What's the mind of the painter? There, there's a painter here. And if we, let's say, if we were to neglect or deny, like, hey, who cares about him? This I, I just like, I just, I just like the look of this flower and like that. So, well, in a sense, we are appreciating the energy of that person, the painter, but um, there's something incomplete. And we go, well, who cares about him or her? This is just my eyes like the, you know, so there's something incomplete there. Uh, so, so, you know, like in, in, in any, yeah, like in any uh, religious or spiritual culture, there's at least the idea of thank God, to thank God before we uh, eat. Of course, in Krishna consciousness, it's more than thanking God. It's preparing the food for God. But at least thanking God, because like, again, let's, let's, let's say if we were to come into our home, if we, if we were to come into a, a, a home and we're, we're served a nice meal, okay, it's just like, well, I just like this food. It's natural, like there's some gratitude for, oh, oh, you cooked it. Oh, and you grew, you grew these vegetables in your backyard and you've served me so nicely. It's natural to have some gratitude. So if we're like, up, if we're like using, even if we're appreciating, appreciating, yes, the sun and the moon and the vegetables and like that, and we're not acknowledging source, we're not acknowledging source in some personal way, it's kind of, it's a lacking, it's a shortcoming on our part. Just like if someone would serve us a fine meal and just like, I like the food. Well, there's a person who prepared the food. What about some acknowledgement there? Mm. So, um, mm. and that's why it's often stressed in the Vedas, including by Srila Prabhupada, Yasyasti Bhaktir Bhagavad Yikinshana Sarvaya Gunes Tatra Samasate Sarah which says that, yeah, like we're very limited in the amount of truly good qualities we can develop if we lack uh, a personal God consciousness, if we lack devotion and personal gratitude. 
because let's just continue with that example, you know, that I'm, I'm not, yeah, I, I don't have gratitude for the source of the wood and the sun and the earth and the, okay, well, that's, it's a failing of character. It's a failing of character. And so, okay, sure, I might develop some qualities, kindness in some ways, but that's a, it's a major anarta. It's a major anarta. And to have that basic recognition and gratitude for this person who's supplying everything, this is a, this is a foundation to develop even sattvic good qualities. It, it's a, and if that's missing, uh, the spirit soul and the human body is quite limited in how much goodness one, one can develop. So, um, so in this verse, again, this is after a series of about 20 verses where it's really about appreciating God in nature. And then in this verse, Krishna says, and know that all mighty, beautiful, glorious creation spring from but a spark of my splendor. So he's saying all the, all the wonder and beauty and material nature, like, of course we want to appreciate material nature. And spiritual nature is even more beautiful, a lot more beautiful. In the, in, in, in the next verse, Krishna says, Atava bhavnaitena kim yatena tavarjuna vista vyaham idam kritsnam ekam shena stito jagat. Krishna says, uh, that, uh, he, he says, oh, and, and what, what need is there for all this detailed knowledge, or, or, you know, with a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire universe. It's text 42. So he's talking about himself as the super soul there. And the super soul is, is Krishna, it, it's, it's, it's full manifestation of Vishnu. And it's, it's just, a, it's, it's a, it, 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 it's a portion of a portion of a portion of an expansion of an expansion of, expa of creation. So creation is kind of getting like, yeah, isn't nature wonderful? Yeah. And then he's sent to, and sent to open the door. And like, that's not, that's not even a fraction of a percent of a percentage of how wonderful creation is. The source, the painter, the painter, he, he's opening the door there. And, and so, um, so this point in the seventh chapter, there's a purport and Prabhupada talks about there's no conflict between personalism and impersonalism. And this point, we, we can appreciate the energy of the Supreme and we can appreciate that and serve the personal source. Now, the possible problem is, the possible difficulty is that um, if in the name of appreciating nature, which is a fine thing to do, if the name of appreciating the energy of God, if then one denies the possibility of the personality of Godhead, then, then one's spiritual life is stunted. And usually such denial comes out of envy. Like, like, I want to enjoy the wonderful energies, but I want to be the center. I don't want to serve someone else much greater than me. So, yeah, so for so many people, like for me, God is nature. I mean, that's a common thing to hear. And that's wonderful. It is wonderful. And that's described here. And then, and then we're encouraged to not stop there. Whose nature is it? So you have your nature, you have your nature, you have your nature, I have my nature. There's always a person behind the nature. Whose nature is it? And even if we're like, well, I'm not so interested in that. Okay, that's fine. But if we're like, th there is no person behind the nature, sure. then that becomes a real block. That becomes a real block. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so just, uh, I think this was in some morning class recently, this was discussed about Mother Earth, right? So this idea of Mother Earth, it's not some, it's not some fairy mythology. It's not some new age thing, right? Earth is really a demigoddess. So this is, this Krishna consciousness, it's, I'll, I'll call it, it's like, it's the, it's the, it, it's, ecolo it's 
ecology and environmentalism that gets at the root. So Mother Earth is a demigoddess. Her name is Bhumi. And of course, we, we want to be conscious about how unconscious we've been as humanity in mistreating Mother Earth and polluting and corrupting. Yes, yes. At the same time, it, like I, I, I don't see it as accurate to go to a place of, of like poor, poor, helpless, poor, helpless, powerless Mother Earth. She's, yeah, like with the blink of her eye, she can do a few earthquakes there. <laughs> um, okay, let's do a category five hurricane over there, um, like that. So she handles herself quite well. So she's not this like poor, helpless mother earth. No, that doesn't minimize or devalue. Yeah, we, we should take a look at how we're mistreating mother earth. And and much, much to our detriment, much, much to, because, so Mother Earth is very pleased and she supplies an abundance when, to the extent that the inhabitants are serving Krishna. She's a devotee of Krishna. Many places to read that, many places. We're at the beginning of the 10th canto of Krishna book. Mother Earth is distressed because um, different demoniac elements are burdening her, so she, she, uh, she, she approaches Brahma and the demigods approach Krishna. So she's, she's a powerful demigoddess who's a servant of Krishna. And so by serving Krishna, by doing this God consciousness, Krishna consciousness, we're yata tarur mulani shechanina, we're watering the root of the tree. And then in one sense, then there's no reason for any separate vegetarian movement. Because it's not like, yeah, that's the whole slaughterhouse industry is so much a big factor in the polluting and the corrupting of Mother Earth. So we don't need to do a movement. We're just naturally, we're naturally eating foods that will be good for the environment and the ecology. And, uh, and so there's no, no reason for a separate ecology, environmental, vegetarian movement or something like that. That's kind of all included in that, uh, like in, in that. <clears throat> So in, in that bhakti yoga, in that devotional service. Mm. And so, um, yes. <clears throat> so kind of the principle in these parts of the Shastras, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, is to come to some sense of awe and reverence. Because like, wow, the mighty waterfall or, or a tornado, or, or the rivers and the lakes and the streams and the, uh, and the birds and the flowers in there. You know, we could have our favorite painters, but none of them can compare to the real flowers or the actual artistic, artistic sense of the bird. It's described that the birds are Krishna's artistic sense. Okay, all right. And then to go, wow, and so the artist behind that the creator behind that, the organizer, the scientist behind, behind all that. It's, it's to, ins, to move us towards inspiring on reverence, on reverence. And then, you know, there's the, then as it's described earlier in the 10th chapter in one of the seed verses of Bhagavad Gita. Aham sarvasya prabhava mata sarvam pravartate iti madva bhajante mam buddha bhava samanvita. That, uh, the Krishna says, I am the source of all spiritual and material energies. The, the, wise, the wise souls who realize this, they naturally engage in my service with devotion. Hmm. And, and so, so then we realize the greatness and then we serve. This, this morning, well, morning, afternoon, and it was evening for Switzerland. We had a nice discussion on the first verse of Bhagavatam. And we kind of express the point. So just so, so this is about coming to on reverence and then serving. That's that's kind of the path of appreciating God in nature. And and even if one doesn't come to bhakti yoga, if they're appreciating nature, nice as long as because then eventually that'll move towards a devotional heart. As long as there's not envious denial of the personal source. 
Prabhupada wrote in one of his poems, in one of the shlokas of his poems to Bhakti Siddhanta, absolute is sentient, thou hast proved in personal calamity, thou hast moved. In sentient means has senses, spiritual senses, not material senses. Senses means likes and dislikes things I'm attracted to, things I'm not attracted to. We have that because it exists. Jan Madhya exists in our source. And he's appreciating, praising, glorifying his, his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, in personal calamity, thou hast moved. So Bhakti Siddhanta established the person, Vedesh Dasavar Eva, Bahameva Vedu, he established Sri Krishna as the personality of God, the sentient absolute truth at the substratum of all existence is Vasudev, a person that is pervasive. That's what Vasudev means. Okay? Okay. Because we think, well, per person means like, person means like, yeah, well, you got, you're, you're about you know, five foot 10 and you, you, you fill up a location. And, you know, so Krishna is a person, person, not just a force, a person that is all pervasive, existing in Golok, Golok Eveni, Yusat Yekilat Mabuto, existing in Goloka Vrindavan with the gopis and the cows and the coward boys and in, in the heart of all living entities. In, in every atom, and Dantarasta, Paramantu, Paramanu Chantarasta. So, um, yes, yes. And <clears throat> we were making the point this morning, we said, well, like, okay, like, Mother Yashoda, or the cowherd boys, or the gopis, they're not, they're not serving Krishna with awe and reverence. They're climbing on his shoulders because they beat him at wrestling. And Mother Yashoda is trying to capture him, and tie him up, and it's impossible to capture Krishna, but she doesn't. Okay, so we can say like, so there's like one, there's, there's, there's one side, <laughs> So for us to not realize the greatness of Krishna, that's our lacking, that's our shortcoming, that's a direction for our growth. And usually it's because of ignorance or envy. Now, for the residents of Vrindavan, like the flute, the Nung Kranantam Aravinda Dalayatakshambar Shambarha Batam Samasitam Buddha Sundarangam I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who was adept at playing on his flute with blooming eyes like lotus petals and head bedecked with peacock feather, whose figure of beauty is tinged with the hue of dark blue rain clouds and whose unique loveliness is charming millions of cupids. So on the flute, the Muna River, Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, for them to not be aware of, not be focusing on Krishna's greatness as the source of all the nature, that's because of their intense love. Their love is so intense. Their love is so intense that, that Krishna is engaging with them in intimate personal relationships that are enhanced by being in spiritual ignorance of of his supreme dominion over all that be. So that's a spiritual yoga maya covering. For us to be neglectful and ignorant of Krishna's greatness, that's not because of our intense love. <laughs> that's more probably uh, because of our uh, intense envy, intense desire to try to be God, intense attachment to material ignorance, et cetera, et cetera. So, so um, yeah, so the idea is to, to come from this material ignorance towards serving with on reverence and then gradually developing developing the higher taste I heard a lecture today, Prabhupada was giving me a lecture in New Mayapur, France. And, uh, uh, yes. And, uh, and uh, it was through French translation. And, and Prabhupada, uh, he was describing the process. <laughs> he 
He goes, yes, so you come and you begin to have some trust. Like, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this makes sense. And, and then you begin to associate <clears throat> at al Shada, Chata, Sadhu, Sangato, Bhaja. And he goes, and then, and then it, it, the word he uses, and then, and then you get, and then you've been, and, and Prabhupada said, and then you begin, you begin to get infected with the ecstasy. Mm -hmm. He used the word infected. Mm -hmm. so you begin to get infected with the ecstasy. And then, and then, uh, he goes, and then you want more, and then you want to associate more and more, and then you want to associate more and more. And then you come and you make some commitment in the process of initiation, bhajana kriya, and it goes, and then like the more that you commit, the more that you commit, then the heart gets cleaned. The heart gets clean. Narta Navriti. He describes the process. And Al Shada Tata Sadhu Sangato Bhajana Kriya. To know Narta Nivriti Satato Nishta Buddhistata. Then we get more and more infected with the ecstasy. Right? And I, I, a quality of ecstasy that's not available in any of the contact of the senses with the sense objects. He sounds Barsha Jamboga, Dukhi Yonaya Evite, Ajantavanta Kante, Nateshu Ramate Buddha, that a wise enlightened soul does not make the goal of their life the contact of the senses with the sense objects. Such things have a beginning and an end. It's like we're eternal beings, we're only fulfilled with with those pleasures that, that, are, uh, that are timeless, that are ever increasing. And that's, that's the bliss that comes from bhakti yoga. Now in the course of doing bhakti yoga, there might be pleasures for the material senses, like, um, and, and there, there are pains. There might be like, oh, today's a very nice day. So it's not like, oh, we reject it. I'm just gonna hide in the closet. I don't wanna see a nice day. <laughs> Now, but the, the, the idea is naturally there's for every, whether, whether we try for it or not, there are some times when we're comfortable, senses are, are pleased, and sometimes where there's pain for the senses. So the recommendation is Matras Parshas Tukantiya Shitoshna Shukadukada Agama Paino Nichas Tamsti Tikshas Rabharata. Krishna tells Arjuna that the uh, that the, uh, the non-permanent appearance and uh, disappearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in, in, in due course, they're just like the winter and summer, summer seasons, they arrive from sense perception. One should tolerate them without being disturbed. Yamhi navya te te, pusham pushar shabha, samudukha sugam tira, so mitat by kalpate. And Krishna says, one who is steady in the material happiness and distress is not, not disturbed and is steady in both, you know, um, that, uh, uh, that such a person is fully eligible for liberation. So material, whether it's material mental, material sensory, material intellectual, happiness and distress will come and go. And not, not to reject it when it's there. And at the same time, to, um, to not make that the goal of life, to not make that the goal of life, to increase the material happiness. Right. Yeah, Param for us. Just saying, it, it sounds so ridiculous and funny to think of like, oh, it's a nice day, let me avoid that. <laughs> but we do that, you know, because they're, they're the same thing, like the same yeah. side of the same coin, or yes. the different sides of the same coin. We do that with the, the negative part. We yeah. try to avoid so much. Right. It sounds funny whenever it's, <laughs> when we're doing the same kind of thing. Yeah. Trying to avoid negative experience that's going to happen anyway, you know, this, you know, right. it's still dry, still that whole thing. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yes, yeah, because because Krishna to tolerate happiness and stress, so we can even tolerate distress. I understand that there's some like physical pain or physical austerity, or or a, a stormy day, and so we tolerate that without being disturbed. Tolerate doesn't just mean tolerate. Tolerate means we really have an enthusiastic, joyful heart, and we continue with our devotional service. But then the idea, of, as you said tolerating happiness, but that's a principle to advance. Kind of like, like we're like, oh, oh, um, this chair is so comfy. Guess I need to tolerate it. 
Um, right. But that's the idea that if things are nice materially, then we could get distracted and moved away from intense devotional service. And if things are, are painful and up, or, or materially not good, then that can also be a disturbance that distracts us. So the key here is whether it's nice or not nice materially, that's the wet stool, dry stool verse from Chaitanya Taratamrita, that whether things are nice or not nice materially or severely painful, severely happy materially, to continue with sober enthusiasm to do devotional service and cultivate the eternal bliss of the soul. I see a chat here, so I'll look at it. Uh, Jim says, that makes me feel better about the selfish polluting of Bhumi. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad to give, give that perspective. Yeah, we, 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 we don't want to uh, be selfish and greedy and corrupt and lusty and destroy the earth. At the same time, yeah, earth is quite a powerful living entity, far more powerful than all the corporate giants and things like that. So that's, that's an important perspective to, to compliment. Yeah. In my reading of Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a part where uh, Dharma in the form of the bull yeah. is speaking to the cow, which is Mother Earth, or religious. Yes. Mother Earth, right? Yeah, yeah. Cow, cow is Mother Earth. Cow is yeah. Mother Earth. And so, in the, the, pur the purport, um, you know, because she was being harmed, you know, she's being harmed basically by Kali, yeah, the age of Kali, right. and then the purport, I think, Prabhupada is saying that, um, well, the, oh, because Maharsh Brikshan was asking them to identify the perpetrator, the perpetrator, and you know, they were like, they, they, they couldn't do it, and Prabhupada was explaining that, that, um, that because they're great devotees. Because Mother Bhumi is a great devotee, then uh, like she knows that nothing can happen to her unless it's the sanction of the Lord. Even yeah. though there's some direct agent that seems that is, is inflicting yeah. this, still she knows that uh, nothing can happen to a devotee unless it's under the sanction of the Lord. Yes. You know, somehow like that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you're referring to it's toward, towards the end of the first canto of Bhagavatam, I think chapter 17 of the first canto. And for me, that whole section, it's, it really gets at the foundation of, of this principle of 100% responsibility, and it takes it to radical forms. Yeah, so there's the conversation with the cow. And at one point, the bull, yeah, Maharaj Pritch had asked the bull to identify the perpetrator. And then, and then the bull goes through different philosophies. And then... Uh, and in the conversation with Mars Prickshit, and the bull says, no, I, I, he, says, he says, one who identifies the perpetrator is the perpetrator. That's really far out. So the way I see it is kind of like, at least one way I see it, I'm, I know I don't have complete realization, but like, so if, so if I say, you did this to me, you transgressed me, and maybe in the immediate context, it's true. Maybe in the immediate context, I was victimized unfairly. But if we understand something about the law of karma, it means I harmed you or I harmed some living entity in the same way. So if I'm pointing the finger, there are three fingers pointing back at me. And so to kind of bring an end to entanglement in the cycle of karma. So the bull says, no, I'm not gonna point the finger. I'm reminded in, in the foreword of the second edition of Relationships That Work was written by Peter Burwash. And, uh, and Burwash, uh, he, he was a touring tennis pro in the 70s. He, he roomed with tennis greats like Arthur Ashe. And, um, and then he developed the, the, the most successful tennis teaching company on the planet. And he describes He's actually referring to his meeting with Prabhupada in Mayapur in, I think, 76 or 77. And Burwash had just been badly cheated out of a lot of money by a friend. A friend cheated him. It was a business partner. 
And so what he writes in his foreword is uh, that he, he, the way he sees himself is he was quite, quite selfish and self-centered and self-absorbed as a child and a young man. And then he said, and then, and then I met a spiritual teacher who told me the two most important things I ever heard. Um, one, spiritual life begins when you understand the law of karma. Two, don't be angry at the instrument of your karma. So karma, it's synonymous with radical responsibility. Radical responsibility. Thanks for invoking that part of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Other questions, comments, sharing at this time? What's the distinction, if there is any, between when something happened to us, looking at it as, oh, that's my karma, and looking at it, oh, that's Krishna's blessing? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so what's the distinction? Okay, right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that, you know, it, we have the opportunity to see it as both, as both. That like, okay, yeah, so I can see maybe uh, because of different activities, now I'm getting this maybe maybe painful karma coming my way. And this is a blessing from Krishna to move me to clearer, fuller, deeper, stronger determination to, to, to engage in my transcendental life, to, to engage in, in, in my transcendental life. So we can see it that, yeah, this is just mechanical karma. I caused harm, harm's coming to me. Okay, maybe I don't understand all the details. And I receive that, I accept that, I relate to it as a blessing from Krishna, as an opportunity to go, to go for my real bliss, to go, to go for transcendental life and really solve once and for all the pillars, the, the pillar problems of material life, birth, death, old age, disease, and that whole cycle. So, uh, you know, so like, of course, so yeah, like, yeah, this is my karma and the whole thing of karma, just like nature. Well, it's all, it's all a blessing from Krishna, truly. And then, it, you know, to the extent that we're ready to receive it that way and relate to it that way. Thank you, Malani. Hare Krishna. Any other realizations, questions, comments? Well, I appreciate it. Um, you're, when you're speaking about impersonalism, and there's no conflict, there's, there's no problem unless, yeah, there's no problem if, if we're at least open to uh, a person being behind the, uh, at least we're open to the idea of personalism. Like that. Yeah, open or at least not reject. Not reject. Because I was, I was actually with Mama Chandra and um, our men's reading of uh, Sri Ishopanishad, which yeah. we're almost complete. We're going to try to complete the next, next time or the next one, two, one or two more meetings. Then uh, I was sharing about the personalism that comes up a lot with Sri Ishopanishad for me. And, uh, and I was just saying, I'm kind of just like hope, there was some like hopelessness of like, I'm just, really, I'm really honest about it. I'm pretty strongly in, you know, conditioned or just yeah. uh, foundationally in person. It's like, it's hard for me to imagine anything really beyond this body. You know, when it really comes down to it, there's a nitty gritty, like, you know. Yeah, at the core of your heart. At, at the yeah. core of like making decisions or my daily life or whatever. Like, it's hard to really imagine anything beyond this body. And it's hard for me to uh, imagine anything after this body. 
and probably if, if anything i'll just merge into the nothingness or whatever yeah that seems realistic to me you know so that's kind of where i'm coming from it's kind of hopeless in a sense and i was just thinking well I'll, all there is to do is just hear from PowerPoint, just read from PowerPoint, yeah. and eventually that will be defeated you know so but i appreciated hearing that it's like well that's okay i can be you know that's where i'm at and that's where i've been probably for ages and ages or you know many lifetimes and so but as long as i'm at least oh i am open i think so i'm open to krishna you know to be <laughs> yes. as a person and i'm you know putting myself in a position to at least you know be available um to you know surrender to a person so yes that was i appreciate that for, you know, that, that yeah that you, you were seeing yourself in, in that part of the class yeah, and uh, that's it. So then, yeah, yeah, like 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 Arjuna in the battlefield. He 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 wasn't really agreeing with Krishna's perspective, but he wasn't folding his arms in cynicism and just running away and said, "You this is useless." He goes, "Okay, all right, I'm 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 ready to hear. I'm 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 ready to hear. I'm not I'm not going to blindly accept, but I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to follow the process." And so you. You're following the process. I'm following the process too. Certainly, if I look in my heart, I can see impersonalism on a good day, <laughs> and on less good days, maybe voidism and materialism and things like that. But then, yes, yeah, so we're we're following the process, and then our our hard hearts get softened. Our our hard hearts get softened um, through the. Krishna says that in Bhagavad Gita, much tenth chapter, much machita mat ganapata gana odiantas prasparam um katiantas chamam nicham to shanti chavamanti cha. He says, yeah, through through association with the pure devotee, with other sincere followers, then you know we can see we're we're a lot more personalist than we were ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Prampara. Other comments? Uh, uh, Jim Wood. Uh, you're on mute right now. I'm not hearing. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I just appreciated Parampara sharing um, about just feeling like I, I think I've heard him talk he had, might have had atheistic parents and so did I uh, just feeling like maybe there's just been a lot of conditioning in the past past lifetimes and um, and some and I can relate to just sometimes you just can't you, you can't um, uh, think or I don't know, even try to feel any other experience than what you're having and um, and I appreciated your answer too David but I, yeah I just to that i just wanted to sh just kind of just yeah share that just like um and then sometimes i have a, like i don't know i i don't like to like try to i guess i get confused with thinking i'm complaining and and sharing at the same like when is it complaining and when am i sharing what i'm feeling and if i'm feeling like you know I need someone to pity me or I'm feeling a little, um, you know, hopeless. And, and, uh, so I guess, yeah. So I just, that, that comes to mind too. Just like, um, uh, cause yeah, this, you know, this material world can be, can be challenging and tough and, and you can feel that voidism and the impersonalism that, that, um, um, that you've been conditioned by. And so anyway, just wanted to share that. Thanks for sharing, Jim. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Jim. Yeah. I think, I think, I think Jim, he may have referred to Prampara's parents. My understanding of Prampara's parents is more or less they're pious Christians. Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, it was like, I mean, school and uh, education, you know, atheism. And all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my father was a, a teacher, so I, I was raised in secular humanism. And that's where it's like at the end of the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, um, 
that uh, Krishna says, Ivam Bhurde Prambhuva Samstop Yaman Matmana Jahisha Tru Mahabo Kamarupam Durasadam. So, also, also, third chapter, Krishna says, Yeah, he says to Arjuna, don't be a pretender. What can repression accomplish? Don't be a pretender. Meaning, like, let, let's acknowledge what's there, let's experience our experience. And as you say, Jim, in the name of experience, my experience, I could just start wallowing and now I feel this. We can get into, I want a pity party. And that's not really helpful. Experience our experience, feel our feelings. Don't deny them, don't suppress them. Let's not do spiritual bypass. Let's not put a mask on. Experience our experience as a foundation, as a foundation for, for moving to higher level experiences. So Krishna says, acknowledge what's there in the lower self. We've got our conditioning for most of us, maybe not all of us, we got our conditioning, which might not be higher levels of bhakti yoga for some of us. And um, okay, and so we and, and we can see that and based on that, really I'm a voidist, really I'm, a, I'm, I'm my body, really I'm just a materialist, I'm a personalist. And we can see that in our heart, experience that. And, but not, not, not to wallow, not, not to indulge there and to, to be guided by higher intelligence. Like even, I do feel this, I'm not denying, because uh, this the psychologist Carl Jung said, till we make the unconscious conscious, it will direct our life and we'll call it fate. So if we pretend or we deny, then those uh, denied thoughts, experiences, paradigms will drive our life from beneath the conscious surface, that anger, that shame, that fear. So we acknowledge it. And but to experience our experience, to experience our feelings doesn't mean we give them power doesn't mean we give them power. I, mean, I can see so much mayavad, impersonalism, materialism in myself. And I'm endeavoring to not give that power, acknowledge us there and give power to be guided by higher intelligence so that each year of my life, all in all, the quality of my experience is at a higher mode towards transcendence. So, to be, so we can experience our experience, experience my fear, experience my insecurity, experience my emptiness, experience my aloneness, experience all of that, that doesn't mean I need to give it power to make decisions for how I live my life. Yeah. Hare Krishna, <laughs> celebration. Um, it seems also like um, it's a, by experiencing my experience, I have more chance to not identify with it. Yeah. And so much of the process of Krishna consciousness is to free ourselves from false identification. But it's hard to uh, to let let go of false identification if I'm not aware what those identification are. Yeah. Hey, thanks for that. Thank, thanks for that, Malini. Yes. Yes. That. Uh, right. Right. If I'm not acknowledging it because it doesn't meet my image, then I'm not. I'm never gonna. I'm not. I'm never gonna detach from it because I'm not even acknowledging it's there. Yeah. Laura. I really like, oh, I had oh. one small comment, like at the beginning of the class, you said something that really touched me. You said uh, material nature is so beautiful. And so we can imagine our spiritual mass, spiritual nature must be so much more beautiful. I, I really appreciated the way you put that. It, it touched my heart. Thanks for sharing that. Because Sometimes Krishna consciousness is misperceived as like, you're denying the beauty of this world. It's like, no, not at all. Like as we appreciate Krishna, we appreciate the beauty of this world. And yeah, and uh, yeah, it's, this, there's so much beauty and, and glory. And, and the spiritual nature, the spiritual nature is, trillions of times more vibrant and beautiful. So, so that's, that's meant to give us some impetus to, yeah, let me, let me visit there. Thank you, Melanie. Two things. Yeah, I love being able to practice this Christian consciousness and, 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 and love Mother Bumi and really enjoying what you're sharing about nature and Feel very connected in nature and being able to see the spiritual qualities in nature. So thank you for that. And then I don't know if it's necessary to share, but I'm going to share just a little bit of my own personal 
um, thing of what you just said, both of you about, yeah, experiencing my experience and all that. Can I give a personal example of what happened from Please. yesterday? Please. And I think yeah. that's actually, I think, it's, I think it's good for me to share because I know I've been noticing when I share things out loud, like, yeah, like more doubt or more stuff comes up almost. If I'm not at all an expert. I'm still practicing this, but I had such success, especially this past year was very challenging, but yesterday something small happened for me and I really was able to like notice it. And it was really beautiful because I sat for a while and I decided that I was gonna go outside and chant and it was a full moon. And, but like, I just, I, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chant around and I was chanting and while I was chanting, I brought in like the I am experiencing. And I, I did that a lot through, through the support of a, a coaching this past year and then probably in PPTC too. But it was just like this beautiful experience of I was like chanting and then I was like, I'm experiencing mm -hmm. it. And it and it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like vomiting, not vomiting, like um cathartic for me, but it was like yeah I, I didn't even know I was like a little bit of anger a little bit of sadness like all these things and it was just like it was really sweet it was really sweet and like it was really nice to be able to experience it and identify it like feel it like right away and then it was like cleansing and then I like went back to chanting and I just I felt really like happy and it was really like I don't know if I'm pride be proud of myself is that the right word but I just like felt really responsible and like I took care of myself and I felt like like right I definitely know very a lot of personal experience of giving the power to my emotions and I didn't do that this time I I was willing to like feel them right away and then like chant like work them in with chanting and using the yeah, I am experiencing so it's pretty good <laughs> yeah sounds like you you could you could experience your progress in in spiritual life that too yes I to, to experience your emotions without just reactively giving power there and it does sound like this sweet integration of the processes of chanting Hare Krishna Japa and experiencing your experience and you integrated those processes in a very organic sweet joyful way mm -hmm. and like the desperation that I used to feel perhaps like the fear that would come up and then like needing someone else to hold me in that and like I, I still think that's that's really nice to have friends and support and I see like me reaching out sometimes like that's I want that in my life but like it was like a, it just that wasn't the first thing the first thing was like I'm gonna go and chant and I'm gonna chant and also like see what I'm experiencing and it was, and I, instead of going in my head, it was just simple. Simple. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm moved by your sharing that that's, that you just know that's, that's where you, that's where you took shelter. Yes. In the chanting rather than trying to figure something out. Yes. Just, just jai, just... jai, jai. I, jai, jai, jai. I'm still <laughs> done. I'm trying to figure it out. Cheryl sure still do that. <laughs> it was yeah. good. Yeah. Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is simple for the simple. Sim and simple doesn't mean simplistic, doesn't mean simple-minded. Mm -hmm. Sim simple means a, a, a clear realization. Yes. I love that word, clear. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. clear. clear. Clear realization. <laughs> and it means I'm not, I'm not creating artificial complexity that becomes a whole festival of misery. Yeah, I know that one. <laughs> you know that one. I know that one quite well. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marie. <laughs> right. She was giving a thumbs up. Though. Got it. I got, got it. that. <laughs> I got the non-verbals there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Marie. Any other comments or questions or share?
thank you. Thank you all for your association and presence and, and devotional intelligence. Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.